problem is not the parents, the problem is not the children, the problem is a system that protects academic failure. Hi, I'm Nick Gillespie from Reason TV, and today we're talking with Madeline Sackler, the director of The Lottery, a new documentary about school choice. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Uh, tell us, what is The Lottery that you're talking about in The Lottery? Well, The Lottery in this case is actually for a school. It's a high-performing school in Harlem. It's a public charter school, and by law, if more parents enter their kids to attend the school, then there's space they have to hold a lottery, and that's exactly what it is. And I mean, this is where a kid's hopes are either you know made whole or totally crushed, right? Yeah, I mean, parents in Harlem are very lucky because they have a lot of options for their kids. Unfortunately, a lot of parents still don't know about all of their choices. So some of the parents in the film, this was the only school that they had applied to and their chances were not good. And these are, are always described, I mean, those scenes as, as gut-wrenching and tear-jerking and whatnot. Um, yeah. what, what drew you to the material? I had actually, I had seen, I didn't know much about charter schools or really the sort of reforms that were happening in public education, and then I saw news footage of the lottery that we ended up featuring in 2008, and I was really surprised by the number of parents that were there. There was about 5,000 parents. For and how many slots? About 400, um, and I just couldn't believe it because I had been hearing that the reasons for the achievement gap and the problems with public education were because, were poverty, mm -hmm. poverty-based or culture-based or because certain parents don't value education, and yet what I saw was totally contradictory to that. I s literally saw thousands of parents that wanted something better, so I wanted to tell their side of the story. What is it about charter schools that uh, make parents come out in droves to, uh, you know, to, to get their kids in them? I mean, I think parents respond to results, and, and they respond to the culture in the schools. They can see that they're strict but focused on positive reinforcement and towards getting the kids to college. Um, so, you know, it's very striking. Like the school that we featured in the film, about 95% of their kids are at grade level, and in Harlem overall, it's 56%, which is hard to understand, but the fact that there's really half of students in Harlem overall are at grade level, that's an enormous difference. I mean, they're basically achieving twice. Who are, who are the villains in the lottery? Well, I don't know if there's really villains. I mean, I think it's easy to point fingers, but, but what Can I you did... point some? Or? Well, no. I mean, what I... What I discovered by the end of the project was that um, the answer to my question going in, which was, you know, if there's all these parents that want better schools and there are schools that are closing the achievement gap, why aren't there more? And the answer is politics. Um, and there are organizations like the Teachers Union and ACORN and certain politicians that are very committed to the status quo. Do you think that we're at a tipping point? I mean, one of the things that's interesting is that school choice is about choice. We have choice and in increasing amounts of choice in other parts of our lives, whether it's, you know, coffee drinks or supermarkets or clothing. Um, are we on the verge of an educational revolution that is based on consumer choice? Yeah, I absolutely believe that this is a critical point right now. I mean, it's really historic. I think it will go down in history, and I just hope that we continue moving in this direction because the president is taking, President Obama is taking extraordinary measures to try Such to implement as. critical school reform. Well, his race to the top efforts are, you know, over $4 billion towards real school reform. Although he also shut down the school choice program in D.C. Yes, so, that's true. So yeah. I think the, uh, his commitment may be questioned. At, but at the race stage. to the top thing, I mean, the race to the top effort, we're seeing reform sweeping the country. I mean, in New York in January, the cap on charter schools was at 200, and they weren't able to lift it. But now in June, at the, and just in time for the second race to the top deadline, they more than doubled it. Mm -hmm. And that's a real, real change for kids. Yeah. So I think, you know, your local politician cares what you think about education reform and politics in general. So if you see them in the supermarket, ask them why there's an achievement gap and what they're doing to fix it. Um, you know, calling them, leaving messages. If they get 50 or 100 letters, it makes a huge difference. Why should somebody who doesn't have school-aged children or doesn't particularly care about education be interested in your movie? Well, this is definitely something that affects all of us. I mean, I think whether or not you have children, the risk of failing to improve public education is enormous, not only on a financial level, but 
Mayor Cory Booker calls this the biggest threat to our national security because we will just not be able to continue to compete on a global level. Um, other reasons to care about the movie? I think it's a really good story. Mm -hmm. Yeah, talk, talk, <laughs> about, we'll talk about one of the characters who you find most memorable and what is their journey through the uh, picture? I mean, for me, the most interesting and important thing about this film and the issue really are the kids and the families. And we featured four really beautiful families who are just, when, it, when, it, when you look really drill into it, this is just a story about parents that want something for their kids and can't have it, and the obstacles that stand in their way. And I think that's really a, just a universal story. What are the types of things that charter schools do, or schools of choice more broadly, what are they doing differently that you don't see in a traditional school? Yeah, I mean, I think it's very odd to me that there's sort of this attachment to a one-size-fits-all approach to education. I mean, there's kids are, are all really different, and parents, more affluent parents forever, have had the ability to send their kids to schools that focus more on art or on sports or, or math and science. And that's just been sort of an elitist opportunity in, in the country. And yet people point to public education as the foundation of our democracy. Um, well, I don't think that our democracy is about serving kids in certain demographics in lower income communities a worse education than in higher income communities. Well, I, I don't think know that where that's you found that's, you know, that's <laughs> the Marxist reading of American society, which is that the, the school system exists to replicate the existing class order, right? Yeah, well, I don't think that that's really very, <laughs> very good yeah. for, for the country no. or for commu like certain communities. So um, I think if we you know, look really deeply at what matters to kids and to each of us, um, we'd realize that um, it's right and, and just mm -hmm. to provide families in lower income communities with the same choices that other parents do have. You, uh, how do you describe yourself politically? Um, I, I, did, I think I'm apolitical. And it's funny because the movie's been called partisan. And it's really, that, I mean, it's, that's just factually wrong, but it's also just not a partisan issue. I mean, we show in the film very clearly Democrats on both sides of the gradient. Um, so I don't really think that I fall on one side or another. To me, it's just very simple. It's, we should be doing what's best for kids, and that's not in any way a political statement. How did you feel in, you know, in those moments uh, when you're, you're filming uh, children and families who are either elated or absolutely dejected? I mean, how, as a filmmaker, how do you, how do you process that? Well, it's really hard going into it because everyone, from us to the families, are placing a bet. I mean, we're playing odds. And the, the chance of each of the four kids in the film winning the lottery was one in seven. That's terrible odds. And so, you know, all of us, I think, were emotionally preparing ourselves for either outcome for all of the kids, but there's just no real way to prepare yourself for something like that. I mean, I think the risks are enormous for the kids and the, po the possible upswing is, you know, even greater. Um, but, you know, we became very close to the families, so we're, we're still in touch, so it's not like everything ended on, at the lottery. I want to thank Madeline Sackler, director of The Lottery, a new documentary about school choice. We're talking to Reason TV. I'm Nick Gillespie.